Hi everyone, we got a lot of questions about the rosary. What is the rosary? Should we use the rosary when we pray? Is there more power in praying with the rosary? And why do people pray with the rosary? Oof, so many questions about the rosary. And I'm going to answer most of them by looking at what scripture, the Bible, says about it. And it is going to be shocking. So let's not waste any more time, let's get to it. Alright guys, so what does the Bible say about the rosary? Well, you can study it cover to cover and you will find that it says nothing about praying with something like the rosary or, well, the word rosary is not even in the Bible. So the question is, where does it come from? It comes from the Catholic tradition. Many, many, many years ago, in the Middle Ages, a lot of monks would come together and pray a certain prayer around 150 times a day. They would repeat prayers from the Psalms, the Lord's Prayer, the Old Father Prayer, the Hail Mary Prayer, and so on. Now, first of all, this is very strange, but I'll explain it as we go along and, and you'll see why. They even used 150 rocks just to count, you know, so they can keep track of repeating the same prayers. And then later, a lot of normal people, normal folks, joined them in the prayers because they didn't have a lot of Bibles back then. So it became this traditional thing. And then later, Saint Dominic, as he was called, he started to implement it. But listen to how he came to the rosary. Jesus' earthly mother, Mary, supposedly appeared and gave the devotion of the Holy Rosary to him. And this was to assist him in combating the Albigensian heresy. This all happened in southern France. Now that does sound a little bit strange, doesn't it? Well, give me a few minutes here and I'll come back to this. The number of prayers that they would repeat would correspond with the number of beads that they have on the rosary, just like the 150 rocks that they used to use. The beads are used by Catholics to help the practitioner to keep track of around 180 prayers. And today, the basic rosary only has 59 beads. Listen to this. 53 of them are for Hail Marys. The other six for Our Father's Prayer. So now you know what the rosary basically is and where it comes from. Another question some of you asked me is, do you have more power when you pray with the rosary? Well, definitely not. You know, it's just like these people who go and they keep their Bibles open and then they pray or they keep their Bibles open in the house or they use oil, you know, to just <laughs> basically touch everything in their house because they think it will have more power or using holy water. It's material things. It's just like white magic. Other religions do this. Not us. True children of God, we now have direct access to God the Father through Jesus Christ, through our faith. James 5 verse 16 says, The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. There's nothing added to it. It's strange that people always want to add man-made traditions to their religion, to the Bible. Never add something to the Bible. Don't add holy water, crosses, and all of these things and thinking that it will have more power. No. Listen carefully. Scripture says that we can only worship God in spirit and in truth. No material things. John 4 verse 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. It doesn't say spirit, truth, and then the rosary. Spirit, truth, and then holy water. It doesn't say spirit, truth, and then keep your Bible open and getting special powers. Or just go to a priest and just the priest can pray for you. No. Never add things to the Bible because then you are creating a religion in your head that doesn't exist. Because this is the only truth we have in this world. The absolute truth of God that He already revealed to us in Scripture. So don't add anything and don't take anything out of it. The only other thing that can help us with prayer that's in Scripture is fasting. To show God that you are serious, you're seeking His face about something, making time for God. Break through prayer. You pray and pray and pray and pray until God answers you. And you show Him that you're serious with it by fasting. Take a look at Ezra 8 verse 23. 
So we fasted and implored our God for this. And He listened to our entreaty. Now I need you to listen very carefully because this is very important. Nowhere in Scripture does it say you have to pray with the rosary. So it's unbiblical. In fact, nowhere does it say that you should pray to Mary. Because Mary is dead. There is no other mediator. Only Jesus Christ. He is the only mediator between humans and God. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Second, nowhere in Scripture does it say that Mary is holy. It's unbiblical. Only Jesus lived a sinless, pure life here on earth. He was 100% human and 100% God. But only He, on earth, was sinless, not Mary. Even Christians today, even... <laughs> We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have the new spiritual nature, but we still have the fleshly nature and we will still sin. If you say that you're a Christian and you never ever sin, then you are a liar. Because the Bible says in 1 John 1 verse 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now listen to this. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His Word is not in us. He wrote this to Christians, to brothers and sisters in Christ. We still sin at times. Yes, we can overcome sin if we act through the Spirit. But we have that fleshly nature, and sometimes we fall. We are weak. And just like us, Mary was a human. And in Luke 1 verse 47, Mary says this, And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My Savior. Why did Mary call Him my Savior? Because you only need a Savior if you are a sinner. So she acknowledged that she is a sinner in need of a Savior, who is Jesus Christ. Mary is just a human being and she's dead. And the Bible warns us not to pray to people who are dead. Deuteronomy 18 verse 11. There shall not be found among you Anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer. Verse 11. Or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. As a child of God, you should never pray to dead people. Why? Because that's what the Bible says. So if it, even if a church or a preacher tells you, no, you can pray to dead people, what, who are you going to listen to? What are you going to do? Are you Are going to listen to a preacher, a church, or are you going to listen to the Bible, God's inspired word, which He already revealed to us? You have to listen to Scripture. If you are a true Christian who obey God's word, you should not pray to Mary, only to Jesus Christ, only to God. Listen, if you pray to dead people, you do the same thing that other religions are doing. Even here in South Africa, people pray to their ancestors. And it's very easy for the demons to pretend that they are their ancestors. So there's a lot of demon possession here. You need to start listening to Scripture. Obey God's Word instead of listening to man-made rules, traditions, man-made religion. That's exactly what happened back in the time of Jesus when He was here with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Colossians 2 verse 21, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to things that all perish as they are used, according to human precepts and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. Wow, you know, it is like we learn nothing from what Jesus even told the Pharisees back in the day. Telling them to stop repeating their prayers. Because that is exactly what the rosary was made for. And that's exactly what people are doing today. Jesus said in Matthew 6 verse 7, And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. 
Did you listen to what he said? Don't do as the Gentiles do, because they do repeat these words and mantras to their gods when they pray, and they still do it today. And Jesus says, don't do that. Do you think it's going to be better to pray to Jesus with a sincere, pure heart? You pray one sentence, one time, for a specific reason. And then to take that same sentence and do it 150 times and think then God will listen to you. Yes, there is something as breakthrough prayer where you come and you just bring your whole heart in front of God and you pray to Him about everything. But not repeating the same thing over and over and over like a mantra. We're even doing that with the music today. Singing praises to God, but you sing the same thing 10, 15 times and you just, it's like you get into a trance almost. No. You never see people in scripture using the same phrases over and over and over as a mantra. You never see that. But you do see that in other religions. And then you also see other religions using beads. But that's just it. We, as children of God, now, as a temple of God with the Holy Spirit in us, we have direct access to God any time of the day, everywhere. <laughs> That's the amazing thing about having a personal God that loves us. We do not need to use beads. We do not need to pray to Mecca. We do not need to sit and meditate, do yoga. And we do not need to bring offerings to a statue that are, in reality, demons. Because 1 Corinthians 10 verse 20 says, No, I imply that what pagans sacrifice, they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You need to move away from things, thinking that even if you pray now with a cross, God will hear you. No, that is doubting God. That is doubting the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. What He did for us is enough. We now have direct access to Jesus Christ if you're a child of God and He hears you everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're in America or in South Africa or in China or in Japan or in Australia. He hears you because He is there with you in spirit. And you need to go to God with an open, sincere, honest heart and just pray to your Father in heaven and He will hear you. Not on this mountain or that temple or this place or that place that has more power. No. There where you are, just as you are. Believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. That time has already come when Jesus died on the cross for your sins. You are not enslaved anymore under sin, under the old law of death and sin anymore. You are made free under the new covenant because of your faith in Jesus Christ, under the law of the Spirit. So if you are set free, then act like it. You, as a child of God, with the Holy Spirit who is in you, you now have direct access to God the Father. And the Spirit through you cries out, Abba, Father. Romans 8 verse 15, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. I want to ask you today, as a brother in Christ who loves you, stop listening to man-made religion, man-made tradition that's not found in Scripture. Study Scripture. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Study His Word, because that will tell you how you should live. And that is real love if you obey God's word, not men's word. 1 John 5, By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Now, if you want to know what true faith really is, according to the Bible, then watch this video here and I'll see you there. And before you go, always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated. To thee.